Hi, today I'm going to explain how to do the resection. Now the resection is basically to determine your position, which is the P, where your VR light is set up. Uh, and then you use known coordinates like A, B, and C to calculate um, where you are, what's the coordinate of your position. So, first of all, um, these are the readings you took. So you took your circle left and your circle right. Um, for horizontal and you must work out the averages of these now these are based on a guessed southerly direction so you'll see that your um, calculations will correct uh, your uh, readings no matter if they're quite off hopefully you've uh, done it quite accurately which makes calculations a bit easier but yeah the um, You'll take these readings based on what you guess the southerly direction. Uh, I'll explain to you now why southerly direction. Uh, then you'll see, okay, so you'll take your circle lefts and you'll get closest to the average of the circle left. So your circle right should be a plus minus 180 degrees from your circle left. So to get this average, you're going to say your circle left plus your circle right plus minus 180 degrees. Uh, when it's bigger than 180, you say one minus 180 degrees. If it's smaller than uh, 180 degrees, then you say plus 180 degrees. Um, so you add those two values together and you divide by 2 to get your average. So that's how these averages are worked out. And then you are also given your beacon coordinates. So these are fixed coordinates that's been determined by a surveyor or you have it on an official map. So these are the uh, values we're going to use for this example. All right, so you have to first calculate the orientation correction using the cue point method uh, and then determine final coordinates for point P. So you start with these points. You want to plot them on a graph. So you take your graph paper and you'll work with this set of axes. Now normally this is zero. 90, 180, and 270 with normal mathematics condition plans. But with this one, we work with our 0 degrees and 360 degrees of the southerly direction, that's why we guess it. Uh, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees in a clockwise direction. Uh, and then you'll see that your positive y is this axis, and your positive x would be this axis. The negative um, values would be in this axis. So in terms of quadrants, there's your first, second, third, and fourth quadrant. All right, so what we'll first do is we'll draw on a graph paper. Now I highlighted that this is not necessary to scale. In the document or in the PowerPoint, these are to scale, but um, it won't be perfectly accurate. Uh, so please do this on the proper graph paper when you are drawing it out. So what I did is I plotted out the coordinates that were given to us for each of the stations. The next thing I did is I took the opposite. So the opposite is your average. I could it back. So the, are these readings of your circle lefts from P. And I basically determined what's the opposite direction and drew it from there. So at 140, your P to 140 is a certain value. Minus 180 will give you the direction towards P from your 140. These are all your observed readings. So you basically draw these out so that you can sort of get an area of where your P would be. This just helps you with the calculations. Now I just want to emphasize that um, for representation, I drew it that it's quite a big area to show you that you get the middle of the area to get your P but usually it will be a much smaller area, as in this whole area would be significantly smaller and more accurate. All right, so you draw your P into the middle point, then you'll connect all of your beacons to the P. So now these directions are supposed to be plus minus the average uh, directions that you observed. Now we're gonna use beacon 149 for the test, um, for the orientation, sorry, because uh, it is the first one. 
So what we'll do is since we're using this as our orientation direction and we've decided that we're going to use 140 and 128, we can also do it with 11 and 140 if we want to, but this will be much easier. Uh, we're going to use these and draw a circle that connects them together. Uh, this is where we're going to form our triangle. So now we're going to start with alpha is this angle over here and beta is this angle over here. It's the angles between our Q. So if we extend our 149 to P line to the end of the circle, we'll get our Q. Uh, then if you take the two angles from that to our two beacons we're using, we get our alpha and our beta. Now I connected the two beacons as well as I connected them to the Q point. So now we've got this sort of shape here. Now with basic trigonometry, uh, this angle extends over this line, so it means that both this angle and this angle, since they're in a circle, will be beta. Uh, and this angle uh, looks or basically extends to this line in the circle, as well as this angle extends to this line. So that means that this will be alpha. So those two angles are alpha and those two angles are beta which makes it much easier for us. And then we know this is 180 degrees minus alpha plus beta because we have this triangle. All right, so these are the averages we had for directions. Now to determine our alpha, we'll start with this line. So everything, a line is 180 degrees. So all the angles on the one side should equal 180. So what we'll do is we'll say P149 minus P128 and will give us this angle over here. Then we say 180 degrees minus this angle will give us our alpha. So that's what was done over here. Then for our beta, we want this angle. We can calculate this angle. So what we'll do is we will say the 140 plus 360 minus the 149 will give us this angle over here. And we say 180 minus this angle to give us our beta. All right, so now we have an angle for alpha and beta. And then for our theta, we are going to say this direction minus this direction to get this angle, so alpha and beta. Uh, and then we say that minus 180 to get what the other two angles should be. If you include this as one angle, then what is that angle and that angle together? So basically, it makes sense, your alpha, beta, and theta will be on 180 degrees because they're in this triangle. All right, so this, is, this theta acts almost as a test for you. And then if it's 180 degrees, you know you've done at least all your calculations correctly. I just want to highlight, if you haven't done it correct, if you've used the wrong values from here, you could still work at 180 degrees. But if, because your values are wrong here, yeah, it could mean that your calculation is still wrong. All right, so what you do is you calculate your join beacon, uh, 140 to 180. So these are two coordinates that you do know. So you can easily calculate your direction and your distance using joins, which I'll explain in another video. Uh, then I just showed you the test, what your test values would be. So if these test values are very similar to your original 128 uh, coordinates, then, that, then you know you've done it correctly. All right, so now that we have this direction and distance, we can work out what is our 140 to Q. So 140 to Q will be this direction, so 140, 128, uh, minus alpha, and then it'll give us that direction. So it'll be over here. Then for the distance, we can use this formula. Um, so basically, it will be your direction, or sorry, your distance, times the sine of beta, times the sine of q. And that will give you your distance, 140 to q. And we do the same over here. We say 128, which is now your 140, 128, minus 180 degrees, which will give you 70 degrees, uh, and then 19 minutes and 2 seconds. And you say plus alpha. So it's this direction plus alpha because we work clockwise 
uh, and then that will give us this direction from 128 to Q. And then we do the same with the, uh, the distances. We say the distance, which is going to be the same distance over B, times sine of alpha over sine of Q. Uh, and this will give us our distance. Now what we can do is we can take these values that we calculated, so the distance and directions, and we can do a polar using the coordinates of 140, the distance and direction to Q, to give us coordinates for Q. We do it the same with 128. Uh, we take 128's coordinates, the direction and distance in a polar formula to calculate the coordinates of Q. Now since we worked up here two times, so our values should be very similar. But since there can be errors, especially in our readings, we have to take the average of those two to get our preliminary coordinates for Q. Alright, so then we'll work out our join between Q and Beacon 149. Why we must do that is because um, we need, sorry, let me just clear answer, that's 149 over there. So we have a preliminary coordinate for that, and we have, uh, we have the actual coordinates for 149. So if we work out join, then we'll get a direction. And we can use that direction to orientate, correct our um, observed. So we have an observed direction from P to 149, which in this case, uh, I cannot see it now. Oh, there we go. It's our observed is 313, 37, 37. But if we calculate our actual coordinate or our preliminary coordinates of Q to the actual coordinates of Beacon, 149, we'll get 313, 37, 41. So the difference between this observed and this correct direction is uh, 4 seconds. So now that's how we orientated our observed directions. So now we can apply this correction to our other three. So P1, F2128, P311, P2140. These are the observed directions. If I go back, that's these observed directions. Uh, and then we get our orientated directions for those observed directions. Alright, so the first, next thing we have to do is we have to calculate our triangle's angles. So this is angle 140, angle 128, and angle P. Uh, if we go back, we see that we did orientate the directions. Uh, specifically P128 and P140, since they're part of the triangle, we'll take note of the two orientated directions. So 202 degrees and 95 degrees. Alright, so the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate angle 140. So this needs to be 140 to P, which is uh, P to 140 plus 180 to make it the opposite direction, minus 250 degrees, which is 140 to 128, to calculate the angle. So we are saying this angle minus this angle. All right, then for angle 128, we have to say um, our 128 to 140 minus 128 to P. And the way we get this is we first say 128 to 140 is the opposite of 140 to 128, so that's minus 180 degrees. So we did over here, and then we say 128 to P is the opposite to P to 128. Um, so we'll say P to 128 minus 180 degrees, which we did over here. Then we say that direction minus this direction gives us this angle. And then for angle P, we calculate our 202, which is our P to 128 minus our P to 140, which gives us this angle over here. Since it's a triangle, all three of them should equal to 180 degrees, so that's how we know we've done it correctly. All right, then just the last thing, we have our distance to P, which we calculate through this formula, taking the distance of 140 to 128, and then we use angle 128 over angle P, the same we do um, with our distance 128 to P. We use the angle of 140, which is the opposite one, 
uh, over sine angle P. We get our two distances. Then we say our polar from 140 to P, as we have the direction and the distance, the oriented direction and this distance, we can calculate the pre provisional coordinate to P. Uh, this is the same way we did with the Q point, and then we did a work out of polar using the coordinates of 128, the distance from 128 to P, and the direction as well. And we get these coordinates. Then we take the average of those coordinates, they should be very similar to each other, and we get provisional coordinates for P. So this is the Q point method of the resection. This is how we determine provisional coordinates for P. And I'll explain how to get the prop coordinates for B in one of the next videos. Thank you very much.